So our today's session is VPN. And we are going to mostly we are going to do, we are commonly we are going to discuss about what is VPN, what are the type of VPN we have, and then uh, <clears throat> um, and we are going to discuss about the IPsec VPN deeply. So what is IPsec VPN? How it is working? What are the protocols we, here we are using? And what is what are the um, packets are exchanging? So these stuffs we are going to discuss about ipsec vpn guys okay so find entirely it's going to be theory only so i already shared one theoretical concept uh, recorded video so that so you can just go through that and this is uh, that i just come uh, overall how it is working what is ipsec vpn protocol what are the uh, so <clears throat> what are the ipsec vpn uh, under ipsec vpn what are the protocols we 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 used so that we just uh, discussed right so here i'm going to deeply a little bit deeply and easily I, I just tried some document i mean i drive some document and i just want to uh, give you the clear picture about the ipsec vpn in short and sweet and as well as a deeper okay so <clears throat> <coughs> okay, so let's start our VPN theory. So what is VPN guys? Why we need a VPN? So let's say here I'm having one PC and here I have one PC both one say this is my headquarters source and my destination is branch office. Okay. And now I want to communicate. I want to communicate this headquarters PC to branch office PC. So what are the way I can able to communicate guys? So for our, my official purpose, I'm going to communicate. Yes, it's in a virtual private network only. So what does mean by virtual private network? I'm not accessing, I'm not uh, asking any expansion so i'm just asking what is mean by vpn so what is mean by virtual private network so what by the terminology what is trying to say as vpn so by by using vpn what we can do what is the purpose we are using this vpn So now, <clears throat> just forget about this ISP, guys. Okay, so, okay. Now, I just want to communicate headquarters PC to branch office PC. What are the ways I can able to communicate? Yes, access LAN over there. Exactly, access LAN over the internet. Okay, fine. So LAN means, so a little bit, uh, I just want to, uh, get information you guys with a little bit uh, land it's fine so an authentic way i just want to get answers so instead of land you can replace any other any other words <clears throat> yes exactly it's land and not only land you can use i mean uh, land network you can use a dmc network uh, uh, as well so that's the reason I'm asking authentic word. Instead of land, you can replace one more word. So the, that is locally maintained. Yes, intranet. Yes, exactly. Intranet, or you can you can mention as a, your private network, which is maintained by your locally maintained by in your network. Okay. So <clears throat> private network. You can say it's a private network, or it's an uh, uh, as you said intranet. Okay which is maintained locally which is not maintained by your any isp or any third party medium which is maintained by your local network so let's say i have one headquarters uh, branch and uh, branch office i have okay so i just want to communicate so uh, headquarters to branch office what are the way i can able to communicate so either i can use by i can reachability 
I can reach through internet. I can provide the reachability by using internet. Okay, I get, I just simply I get one internet connectivity and I can able to provide the reachability. Okay, uh, so within a minute, well, as soon as I get an internet uh, connectivity, I can provide the reachability. So this is the best way to provide the reachability and low of cost. It's the best way and cost effective everything. And or another option, you can go to the lease line, private communication. When your head office to branch office, you can lay the cables from your end. So you can make a reachability. So privately, private medium, you can choose private medium any, okay. And private mode or medium. This is if you're using a public mode, it's an internet connectivity is a public mode. Okay, so private medium, you and your destination only are going to communicate your head office and branch office only uh, they are going to communicate, right? So no one will not use this medium. So even whatever you are trying to communicate, they will not in no one will not sniff the data and no one will not understand what is the communicate. I mean, they will not able to know what you are trying to communicate. Okay, so <clears throat> Only thing is, it's a lease line. Example is a lease line technologies. Okay, you can take a lease line from any ISP or you can create your own connectivity. You can make your own connectivity by spending a lot of money and it will take time and it's it has a lot of drawback. So it, it's need a huge money. So a budget, you're going to make, you're going to spend a lot of money and then maintenance wise, lot of thing you have to do so i just want to communicate from my head office to branch office so <clears throat> okay so now as it is i my head office i have let's say 192.168.1.0 network and my branch office intranet network intranet or uh, lan network or you can say it's an intranet locally maintained network one and 92.168. Uh, 2.0 slash 24 network. So this network, I just want to, first reason, I just want to make a communication. Okay, I just want to make a, I'm, I, need, I want to make a communication between these two branches. In these two branches, I have locally maintained network, two network. Okay, so I just want to communicate. For that, I need a reachability. For reachability, I have a two options. One is public network and a private network, which lease line. So if I choose a private network, I, I have to spend a lot of money and troubleshooting and then maintenance for purpose. I need to create, a, I need to separate, I need a separate team for that. I have to spend a lot of money for that and it will time, time taking process to me complete this. So I, I can go another option called public network. So public network by paying something. So I can take, a, I, I just get a, a rental uh, like that. So I take in a public network, they will give a connectivity. ISP will take care about the connectivity and maintenance of this uh, reachability between my branch network to my head office network or head office network to branch office network so i don't need to worry about that maintenance that will be done by isp and they have they they will take care of it okay but the concern is since it's a public networks not only i'm going to communicate not only i'm going to communicate i'm going to communicate with my i mean i'm going to sh share the public medium so it's open source to anyone so anyone public also can use that network so we in that case if i try to communicate Okay, so <clears throat> everyone will know that whatever I am trying to communicate. So it, in case my communication is a plain communication. Okay, this is first reason, first drawback when you are using. And then, so now, so if I choose a van, if I choose uh, to communicate with my headquarters in intra network to branch of his intra network, right? So, or else it's a LAN network. Okay, so in land i maintaining the private network directly i need a public network or i need to use nat for that okay so either i can use nat so send my private network to my uh, my <coughs> branch of his private network i am going to use public network a public ip as a source ip by applying nat and all so nat i have to do but still if i am using direct public ip so anyone can able to understand what is my uh, public ip and they can able to sneak our data first thing 
and or else they can able to bypass our firewall but still i don't want like that i don't want like normal internet connectivity reachability i just want to directly connect communicate with my branch office to head office as it is as my private network so as per it is so this private network to this private network i just want to communicate over the public medium so it's it's not possible normally if if you're trying to communicate the second reason second reason the private network to private network i just want to communicate but that is i'm using a reachability medium as a isp so isp means the private network is in internet real internet private networks are non routable so the traffic will be denied so to avoid this so this is the main reason i need to use the private medium so but if i am using a private medium then what will happen i have to spend lot of money so now my concern is i don't want to spend lot of money so i ignore entire private communication but still i just want to use my public network medium and in a secure way i don't want to allow others to know that and secure way and as well as private network to private network directly i want to communicate without applying that or without you know, uh, neglect anything from this private network to this private network i just want to communicate in a secure way so still i want to use public mode public mode only for that communication so in that case exactly so the tunnel link is you can use tunnel link by if you are using tunnel link that is also part of your private network okay so i mean uh, virtual <coughs> the tunneling is concept is the part of okay so we can use tunnel which which means without applying that you can logically you can create one interface as a tunnel interface and that tunnel will add one more layer so it will use one ip or still it will use public ip to communicate but in it will apply an above of your private network so as it is you can able to communicate your private network to private network in that scenario what will happen your let's say this is your private network sources one 92.168.1.10 and destination is 192.168.2.10 now the one more layer will be applied in your ip ip header here it if you're using eternal it will be add your public ip here so whatever it is let's say 100.10 so according to so if you are saying tunnel tunnel is nothing it's a logical interface so on that logical interface what it's doing it's just applying one more ip header the before normal ip original ip packet will have a private network as source and destination and after after apply the tunnel logical interface that logical interface will add one more ip header and that ip header you will get a public network so the traffic the public network of source and destination 110 like that so that this is the, this will be applied if you are having a tunnel so okay so now the traffic will further forward as per the, the public network only and that will reach your destination public network and after that the one the ip packet will be re <coughs> decapsulated and destination is 110 so it will check and it will go to your public network then again it uh, that uh, that is the public network that is the de destination right so now it's try to open the ip packet while opening one more ip header is there and that ip header says the destination is 192.162.10 which is private network which is directly connected network to your destination okay so now it will further forward the traffic to the destination this is what happened when you are applying tunnel okay this tunnel concept will be applied for vpn so when now use when you are apply the tunnel or v right so it will apply one more ip header and you can use directly communicate with the private network to, to private network but additionally it will use public medium and public ip address as a for a communication purpose but still this 
just normally we're just using a tunnel it's not in a secure communication so so i can by normal tunnel establishment i can create a tunnel interface and i can able to communicate normal normally right so that will not that can able to establish the communication but my second scenario my second thing is what about my security still it is in a plane so no one uh, so anybody anybody can able to read this in case if they bypass the tunnel okay they can able to read that so i don't want to allow that so i just want to use the public medium in a secure way so all for all this my necessity i can use protocol called a vpn so vpn is allow virtually it will allow private network to private network communication by using public medium and also plus secure authentication ensuring the security now it will by using encryption and sec security mechanisms called encryption okay by using sorry to achieve the secure communication again we are we are using that tunnel only by using ipsec or any vpn uh, ssl vpn or ipsec vpn it's using tunnel concepts only but in it is establishing the communication additionally it is using data security mechanism called encryption and then hashing authentication encryption and hashing so these three techniques it's used to make a, secure communication between one source and destination over the internet so that okay the private network to private network over the internet it can able to allow you to communicate but that communication in a secure way it will achieve the sec secure communication guys by using these three mechanisms so encryption authentication and encryption hashing okay so authentication is it's going to ensure i am going to communicate with the right person so that authentication by using some authentication technology so let's say pre-shared key exchange like that or digital certifications certificated by using digital certificate authentication okay um, and then after authenticate the data will share in a proper way encrypted way so non-readable format to readable format to non-readable format and hashing will help you helpful to you to and you uh, cross check the whatever the data is sent by the source that data what whatever the re data we received both are match is that data is already modified or not that will be uh, that will be confirmed by this hashing technology hashing protocols okay so i'll okay so these are all the mechanism we are using these mechanisms will be used by vpn protocols okay so vpn protocols are used these things so tunneling concepts plus security for both it will use guys okay so the <clears throat> for that's the reason we are using vpn so one private network to another private network we are trying to communicate over the public medium in a secure way so then we have only one option called vpn this vpn have we have a two type of vpns guys route based policy based so route based vpn example for route based vpn it will your routing proto i mean routing protocol will decide that secure uh, i mean not routing protocol so router l router will decide okay so example for routing uh, route based vpn it's gre tunnel it's a route based vpn and dm vpn dm vpn is a cisco proprietary vpn protocol okay so these these are all route based vpn and policy based vpn example for policy based vpn ipsec vpn ssl vpn okay and these are all the example for policy based vpn okay so widely used vpn is policy based vpn because route based vpn sometimes it's a proprietary protocol since it's a proprietary protocol all vendor will not support this first reason and your router will decide which 
protocol, you have, uh, how to select the path and everything, how to encrypt everything. But policy-based VPN, your policies will choose that. Or you can policy or access control list, you can say anything. You can, you can define by security rule to select this protocol. And these protocols are open source. So all vendor will support. IPsec and SSL VPNs are all vendor it's supporting. But if you say, if you go for a DM VPN, it's a Cisco proprietary call pro uh, VPN protocol. So in, uh, except Cisco and other vendor protocol will, uh, other vendor devices will not support this protocol. So you are facing some issue. And <clears throat> uh since it's a route based vpn it can work under layer 3 only you can able to provide security under layer 3 but if you are using ssl vpn policy under uh, policy based vpn you can make a secure communication up to layer 3 to layer 7 up to application layer you can make a secure communication but uh, in ipsec vpn also layer 3 v v vpn layer 3 vpn only so it will provide the secure security up to network layer only network layer to network layer from your source to destination let's say source to destination one and two uh, source to destination your network layer only if you're using ipsec vpn or route based vpn it can provide the secure communication up to your headquarters to your branch office headquarters which is comes under the l3 part okay a routing part or isp network isp part or you can say it's a network layer part so it will provide the security from one source to destination transmission up to transmission only it will secure that communication behind that so your application, let's say your LAN PC here on LAN PCs, my site one LAN PC connected here, my site two LAN PC is connected here. So if you're using IPsec VPN, it can provide the secure communication up to your gateway to gateway. Okay. So here, this is plain communication. This is plain communication. In case if someone is already bypassed your network, so they can able to know whatever by you by bypassing your LAN network they can able to know whatever you are trying to communicate. So since it's a plain communication here also, okay. But if you're using a SSL VPN end to end encryption, so it will use from you, it will in and it will use secure communication between your system to system, your source to destination end to end. So no will not, no one will not able to end. See. Okay, so that's the reason the IPsec VPN is preferable for only well-known networks. Your head office to branch offices like that. If you know your that network is maintained by your team or if you know that is well-maintained network and it is static network, if you're not, if that network is not going to change frequently, then IPsec, that, for that particular network only, IPsec VPN is suitable. So the first reason is L3, only it will secure only routing net up to routing I mean, uh, <clears throat> network layer. And then behind that, uh, it is in a uh, plain text. So if it is in a well-maintained network only, you can able to trust that communication. Okay, so, and <clears throat> if it is in frequently changed uh, network, then you can't able to uh, use IPsec VPN. You have to manually again and again, you have to configure it. So since they are using static network, so, so it will not suitable for dynamic network. IPsec VPN is not suitable for dynamic network and SSL VPN is suitable for dy broad dynamic network. And then it's end-to-end -end secure communication. So if you if you are uh, doing work from home, so that and all you can use it by this SSL type VPN type. Okay, so if you are working under your, uh, inside your branch, and if you are trying to communicate your headquarters, then most of that communication is going to through IPsec VPN because that is suitable for well-known network and huge environment. Okay, but <clears throat> SSL VPN is end-to-end -end secure VPN. Okay. However, this route-based VPN and the difference between the route-based VPN and policy-based VPN, right? So you are able to understand. So route-based VPN will, it's an, it will decide by your routers or L3 device and that protocol has to define, I mean, decide. And it's since most, it's not preferable all the time. And it's, it's a ISP side. 
mostly isp they will use this kind of route based vpns isp network they will use this kind of route based vpn okay okay guys so here we are going to discuss about the ipsec vpn and ssl vpn and we are using policy based vpn only so i just want to show you uh, the different i mean i just want to uh, give you some idea about the route based vpn okay so this is the theory document okay route based vpn routing table decide which packet will go through the vpn tunnel Okay, so that will be <coughs> decided by your uh, route based. I mean, uh, that will be decided by the router. Okay, and then it's basically it's work under L3. <coughs> I mean, uh, network layer security only. It will provide the security up to network layer only. Network layer to network layer only. Okay, so the example GRE tunnel and DMV, DM VPN. So the reason this is not familiar, much familiar it's a proprietary protocol so they will not support all the vendor products so that's the reason they use as a end users it's it most these vpns mostly used an isp side only okay <clears throat> but as end users networks so we'll use policy based vpn only and widely used policy based vpn is ipsec all are same i mean ipsec vpn and ssl vpn web vpn client vpn uh, remote vpn everything is same guys okay don't get confused so if you are if someone is asked what are the type of vpn we have then if you are started to tell like this ssl vpn web vpn client vpn remote vpn all are same you are telling only one thing that is ssl vpn okay don't tell SSL VPN, web VPN, client VPN, remote VPN at all. All are same. Okay. And terminology might be different, but the thing is that is SSL VPN only. <coughs> okay. So we know what is route based VPN and policy based VPN, how it is working. I mean, who uh, the reason why we are using policy based VPN widely and why we are not using as an end user, why we are not using route based VPN, right? So that and all. <coughs> this is the only reason why route based vpn widely used by isp networks not end user the reason it's sometimes it's all vendor product will not support these kind of product uh, a vpn since some it's a cisco uh, proprietary protocol and gre tunnel only it's a open <coughs> protocol it will support every vendor in any any routing devices but it's giving the security on only healthy as a end users we don't we are not uh increase that we need an end-to-end -end security purpose right so <clears throat> policy-based vpn we are using it in that policy-based vpn also we have a l3 only l3 encryption uh, l3 secure protocol which is ipsec vpn and it will secure only ip layer okay so and end-to-end -end encryption we have one ssl vpn Okay, so this IPsec VPN, we have as in as per our syllabus, we have IPsec VPN and SSL VPN. So we are going to discuss about the IPsec VPN and SSL VPN. Before that, IPsec VPN and SSL VPN, how these protocols are sending the data as a in uh, not, I mean secure way, how the security mechanism is up used, approached. Okay, so whether it's IPsec VPN or whether it's SSL VPN, how they are sending a data in a secure way from readable format to non-readable format for that they are using some mechanism called encryption so this encryption will change the data from readable format to non-readable format and decryption vice versa readable non-readable format to readable format okay this is encryption for or you can say um, data data security you can say it's a data security yes hashing will used for data integrity
so data integrity means so the originality of data it will ensure the originality of data data integrity and data security it will it will ensure the user will not read or not read your proper data not able to read okay so not user the in middleman so hacker or anyone they who those who try to sneak your data okay so it is ensure the security and okay and these two process we are using it to these two mechanism we are using to ensure the data is secure data okay data security and data integrity for that we are using in data security purpose we are using encryption protocols encryption and decryption protocols and <clears throat> data integrity purpose we are using hashing hashing okay hashing protocols hashing is nothing it is going to ensure by using it's a mathematical calculation Okay, mathematical calculation to ensure your data is not modified. In case it is modified, then your device will drop that packet and it will re reinitiate that traffic to uh, get that again uh, to receive that packet. Okay, so this is this is achieving by some mathematical calculation. For that, we are using some algorithm uh, to uh, encryption to read uh, readable format to non-readable format. We are achieving by using some. Uh, encryption algorithms okay so that and all we are going to see that by using that encryption and decryptions are uh, done by using key concepts okay the mechanisms are going to use these kind of keys okay what is key means the key is a uh, by using this key i mean encryption let's say system a to system b i'm going to send a data the data is hello now this hello is if i'm sending a plain text then that is a readable format i just want to make it as a non-readable format to then only uh, the middleman can't able to read even though he if he sneaked the data so i don't want to allow him to read so now what i'm going to do i'm giving some i'm i'm generating some non-readable format okay by using this encryption technology so so this encryption so by using this encryption technology encryption algorithms i'm going to change this readable format to non-readable format by using that keys keys key is a uh, tool to make your data readable format to non-readable format so non-readable format is called ciphertext cipher text or cipher text okay so this is let's say hello will by using this mechanism so encryption pro algorithms like dash three dash algorithm and all we have so that that dash three dash algorithms are classifying as a symmetric key and asymmetric key okay so let i'll explain you later so this and let as of now just leave it encryption disk by that encryption algorithm using symmetric key method or asymmetric key method i'm going to change that format data original format to non-readable format let's say that non-readable format is instead of hello one two three so for your understanding i'm giving one two three but in, in the real time it will be like you are saying that you are you can able to see like symbol at uh, two a b one anything and non-readable format as a human not able to read this Okay, so your Mac machines only can able to read by using this en uh, encryption uh, decryption protocols. Okay, <clears throat> encryption and decryption. Okay, so this just a minute. After changing this data hello to non readable format one two three actual data is hello. So in case in mean after changing the cipher text, the the cipher text only will be translated to over the internet it will be translated to destination in the middle if attacker if he sneak the data he read only cipher text not original data so he can't able to understand so according to the user the original data is i mean hacker the original data is one two three so now <clears throat> he can able to 
I mean, he can't able to read original data. So now the cipher text will send to your destination. Now the destination need to know actual data. It's hello. So, the, but destination receiving data as a one, two, three. So the destination need to get back the actual data and that data can get back by using decryption, vice versa. So decryption, the same protocol will use encryption and decryption purpose. Okay, so they will use by using a vice versa process, reverse process, the reverse process is called a decryption. So cipher text to readable format. So that is also done by the same protocol, encryption protocol. The same protocol will helpful to you. I mean, it will do that reverse process. And so all you need is you need to define which protocol, which encryption protocol you are going to use here, which for a secure uh, for secure communication purpose, which encryption protocol I'm going to use it in my end. That my source have to define it and so that while exchanging the packet they can able to understand so and so this source it's using this en encryption algorithm so the same encryption algorithm will use to decrypt and so that it can able to get the original data after getting the original data it will process and then it will send a reply and reply also as it is it will send to the before sending to the destination now the replay data will be encrypted for an encrypted data will change as a cipher text cipher text and cipher text will forward over the internet and the destination will reach the packet and now the destination will reverse do reverse process and again decrypt will decryption will happen and then it will he will get a right data guys okay so this is for data authenticity or data security purpose we are using the encryption algorithm so this encryption algorithm we are using two ways this encryption we are done by two ways one by using two type of keys symmetric key and then asymmetric key okay so the symmetric key means it's used same key for encryption and uh, decryption okay it's used same key for encryption and decryption pre-shared key let's say that the pre-shared key if <coughs> okay <coughs> you are going to exchange the data as a pre-shared key. You need to use a need to input that. So it's it's not going to, it's a static one. It's not going to randomly generate. The encryption has done two ways, one by using symmetry key and uh, asymmetry key both. Okay, so the symmetry key, if you are using your encryption and decryption is done by using same key. Okay, so that example for that pre-shared key. If you're using a pre PSK as authentication, pre-shared key. Okay. So as of now, you're not able to understand what is a pre-shared key and what is authentication and all. Just leave it. So that same key we it will use for encryption and decryption purpose. So phase one, IPsec phase one is done by you can also use it pre-shared key for key for authentication purpose. So in that case, it will use same encryption, uh, same key for encryption and uh, decryption okay and if you go to the asymmetric authentication or asymmetric uh, encryption protocol if you are going to use it for asymmetric protocol if you are going to use and that protocol again you can use a it will be gen uh, your randomly generated okay it will use randomly generated key okay by using that protocols the protocol itself it will generate that uh, keys randomly generated and it will share it and while authenticate for encryption it will use one type of key and decryption it will use one type of key it will use two different keys okay encryption will, will use different key and decryption will use different key guys okay so that is called asymmetric key authentication if symmetric keys in encryption and decryption will happen on same key but asymmetric if you're using asymmetric key encryption will use a one different type of key and decryption will use different type of key okay so we usually call it as a uh, private and bubbly keys okay the private bubbly keys are used for encryption purpose private key is used for decryption purpose Okay, so they will exchange the bubbly key, the source and destination which want to establish the VPN communication. They will exchange their data. Okay, what kind of bubbly key they are going to use it. And the private key randomly generated by the protocol which you are choosing for encryption purpose. Okay, 
okay so that you no need to worry so that will be randomly generated okay so <clears throat> clear guys so now what are the encryption protocols we have the cryptograph okay so here you can see what is encryption whatever i mentioned so what is encryption it is going to original readable to non-readable format okay it is going to change it and that can be done in a both ways symmetric way and asymmet asymmetric way you can use for encryption if you're using a symmetric key then you can use a pre-shared key as authentication purpose. So you are going to manually mention that what is the key we are going to use and the same key it's used for encryption and decryption both. Okay, and symmetric encryption, whatever the algorithms which is using the symmetric authentication. So dash, dash is the kind of encryption algorithm. Okay, and three dash, it's three times it will do. The same encryption, the encrypted data, let's say, if you're using a dash algorithm to encrypt hello, so it's only one time dash. Okay, so data encryption standard. It will use 56 bit key. Okay, and three dash means thrice it will do. So this is a one time, the same encrypted data will be again, it will be encrypted and it's second by using dash algorithm second time. Okay, and then again this encrypted data one more time it will be encrypted so layer one layer two layer three likewise it will be encrypted and <clears throat> okay and it's more stronger than dash algorithm okay you can see it's over the dash only it's thrice it's encrypting okay and we have a addition after that aes algorithm advanced encryption standard which is supporting the uh, higher encryption length i mean you can use the higher keys 128 bit length key you can use 192 bit up to 256 bit length you keys you can use it for encrypt and decrypt the data okay so these if you are using symmetric authentication symmetric encryption algorithms so dash three dash aes and example so we are going to use IPsec VPN, we are going to use this authentication only. If you go to the any web based or if you go to the SSL VPN, so web application, each and every uh, web page has SSL certificate that is SSL VPN. It doesn't, it means that is up there, that applying with SSL VPN. Okay, if you go to any website which is using HTTPS, let's go to the You can see just click here and then connection is secure and certificate valid and now you can go to here okay so it's use saw algorithm okay <clears throat> this is asymmetric key only okay so just go to here certificate Yes, you can see RSA encryption. SHA with RSA encryption we are having. Okay, so these these are all asymmetric keys. It's using asymmetric key, which means encryption will done one one different key and decryption will done by one different key. So we call it as a public and private keys. So Okay. So this is SSL, it's used SSL certificate. So this is done by, it's happened in your SSL VPN mostly. Okay, so IPsec VPN also, you can use this certificates, okay, digital certificates, but you have to purchase the uh, certificate from the certificate authority. So let's say this certificate is purchased from the DigiCert. So this is the authority, certificate authority who is defining, who is giving the SSL certificate. And one of the certificate authorities, Google is one of the certificate authority. Microsoft is the one of the certificate authority. Likewise, DigiCert is the one of the certificate authority. Or else you can create your own certificate server. If you have, you can generate your own certificate. Okay. And that should, that will not able to acceptable when you're using a public network communication. So 
you'd be better if you are using a public users to communicate or if you are using an internet uh, to communicate right so in that case if you want to use a ssl certificate then you have to purchase from the globally acceptable certificates just like that certificate vendors you have to use it you can't use your own certificate okay for internet access guys okay so okay fine and now if you go to the asymmetric encryption algorithm one of the algorithm i told i show i show you right sorry i <clears throat> i show you right so rsa in that ssl certificate and likewise we have a dsa algorithm dh group so devi Hellman group in ipsec vpn we will use dh group uh, okay for symmetric authentication so so it will these protocol these are the protocol uh, group dh group and these groups will use highest uh, encryption key length and it will it highest encryption key length group will give a maximum security okay so, so these are all the encryption rs algorithm ds algorithm and dh group you can use it and we use dh group dh group for phase two authentication and you can define it dh dh group okay and in that any group up to 20 1 2 5 14 15 90 20 anything you can use it okay and you can see el another encryption protocol which is used under dh dh group okay so dh group so highest security okay the, you can see that 256 bit and 384 bit and be, above that 768 1024 2000 3000 bit of length but if you see the ec ecc this is ecc encryption technology okay ecc it's other if you if rsa or sha this encryption algorithm it's using the uh some mathematical calculation which is can can be resolver Okay, so you, you reverse process is easy. Okay, they are using prime number concepts, one of the concepts. So if you now you can't able to understand this. So if you want to know, you have to uh, learn cryptography. Okay, so how the cryptography is working and how the algorithms are. You have to learn about the algorithms. So these algorithms, some these algorithms are using mathematical calculations, mathematical approach. So this you have to know each and everything. So it's it will take time. So here we can't able to teach you. I just give you the idea. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> why I uh, why I'm saying this ECC ECC is more secure. It's alternate to RSA and SHA algorithms. Okay. DH group will use okay either RSA or SHA algorithms to integrate data integrity purpose, and in also DH group support the ECC from 1920 so if if you are seeing that 14 15 and all it's using longer bit it will support maximum bit 2048 3072 bits length it will support but ecc if you're going to the ecc ecc 256 384 it's a lesser than that these things right so even though it's a less, uh, lesser key value it support it's in a more secure and fast convergence and then the reason why i am saying it's a most secure is the reverse process is it's very difficult it will use some uh, how to say that uh, some wave concepts and mathematical calculus a sha and a sha a rsa and all will use a mathematical calculation and it's a prime number concept they will use it so you can able to reverse process easily you can able to reverse it so if you are if you're spending some time you can able to reverse that so you can reverse and you can decrypt you can after reverse the process you can able to identify the decryption key everything so you can able to read the data but this is using some uh mathematical drawing i mean like say wave concepts okay i'm not able to uh, tell you clearly how to explain this because uh this up if you know if you want to know that you need to know that mathematical algorithm one the algorithm called 
forget that it's use some algorithm you need to know that algorithm working principle then only you can able to understand so that reverse process okay it's not that much easy you can't able to you can't not even reverse it whatever the data okay so so that it's an a secure one and since it's used less uh, key length so data it has smaller uh, data comparatively other data okay the i mean dh group or uh, sha it's use a maximum key length so it it is occupying maximum key maximum length of data okay but it's lesser than and it's more secure it, because it's non reversible and nowadays it's acceptable nowadays i mean it's a way uh, it's a uh, newly approachable thing okay so now here and there some vendors are using it okay this ecc encryption algorithm but more widely used algorithms are rsa da dash dh okay okay guys these are all the algorithms we are using for encryption purpose encryption and decryption purpose okay dsa and dh group or rsa rsa algorithm okay uh, this is for asymmetric encryption algorithms symmetric is dash 3 dash aes okay this encryption algorithm we are using what is the purpose of encryption by using this algorithms we are going to uh, change readable data to non readable cipher text okay so by using that and non readable uh, <clears throat> cipher text to readable format we are doing decryption reverse process we are doing by using this algorithms either symmetric encryption algorithm or asymmetric encryption algorithm guys okay so this is for data authenticity or data security so let's say now i using this algorithm i have encrypted the data so my in the middle over the internet so i am sending that the data attacker is he is present and he now he sniffed the data and while while sniffing data he is not he try to read and since it's encrypted he is not able to read the data so now he what he want uh, he however he want to collapse your communication so now he is modifying your data in between he modify the data you are sending hello with the encrypted so that's a let's say it's one two three and now he sniff the data and he read it's one two three and there is nothing so now he want to collapse your communication so in between additionally he add some other data one two three four five six okay now the modified data is sent to your destination destination read try to read the data while reading it it's not an actual data it's hello is the actual data but he's modified it okay so this if he try to uh, decrypt the data also that's not possible to identify because it's in a modified data so that it's not an original data right so now my communication will be collapsed i'm not able to understand my destination will not able to understand what your source is trying to say okay so how to avoid that so by using encryption algorithm you can change it to readable to non readable format but in between in case if someone is try to sneak your data i mean modify the data how you can prevent that so for th in that case comes hashing algorithm hashing hashing is for used for data integrity data integrity means its originality i'm ensuring my data whatever i'm sending the data that is not modified so my destination need to know whether that is modified or not if it is modified your destination will drop that packet will not accept that uh, packet okay so it will re request to share that same packet again to your source okay so if it's possible when you fear identify that that is modified or not so how to add modified i mean how to identify that by using hashing algorithms so these hashing algorithms what it will do okay in source and destination both will exchange their data what encryption they are going to do and what hashing algorithm that, just leave it at that one so after encrypted the source the ip packet right so this hello is the original packet this is will be encrypted as a one two three after encrypted so this packet 
okay this is source ip so and so source ip let's one and this is your ip header this is your data encrypted data so which is one two three and inside that it will add the same ip packet it will add one mathematical calculation or you can say that is <coughs> hashing value hashing value this is an, a numerical value okay it will it will by using that hashing algorithm sha sha is the one of the example for uh, hashing algorithm okay by using sh, <coughs> sha algorithm or any other hashing algorithm okay it will generate mathematical value for your original packet original encrypted packet so that value is one or uh, two let's say 12 now this packet with the hashing value ip header original encrypted data with the hashing value this packet will send over the internet the middleman if he's trying to sneak the data and he's additionally modifying it so now the data packet is going to have 80 and the data modified data additionally that hashing value 12 will be attached so now it will reach to your destination and your destination will try to uh, reload <coughs> uh, try to open the packet and now it is after open that packet right so now it will check the hashing value of that sender now what will do it will do it will re do reverse process for hashing purpose as well so it will by using the same protocol it will generate the hashing value so I'll, this packet is modified now okay so previously original packet have some value and modified packet while try to hashing so that time it will additionally get some other value let's say that is 15 i'm just giving the example guys okay so now it will try to match the source user attached hashing value and this destination generated hashing value if it is matched both are plus 12 and 12 then that your destination will consider that packet is not modified actual packet it's an original encrypted packet so it will accept that and it will do reverse process by using a same encryption either asymmetric key or symmetric key and it will read the data then it will send a reply okay while sending a reply again it will re uh, encrypt and ha hashing will do and it will attach the hashing value and it will go to the destination destination will again retry to open the packet and then again the reverse process vice versa it will happen guys so the hashing value if it is data is modified hashing value will be different so by using this hashing value comparison my destination can understand this data is modified or not if it is differ then it will consider the data is modified so it will not accept the data packet it will ignore the packet and it will reinitiate that same packet to the source okay once it get the repacket uh, reinitiated packet then it will cross check again that the packet is fine then it will arrange the data properly clear guys what is hashing now what is encryption and what is hashing clear right so data is used for data integrity and what is the hashing function we have a md5 l hashing algorithm and hash sha hashing algorithm sha1 sha2 like that we have up to 512 sha256 384 512 so this is your maximum hashing support value support okay likewise we have a hash mac okay <clears throat> hash mac hash to message authentication code this is used for authentication pre-shared key you can use it for pre-shared key exchange so okay so this is hashing guys clear what is encryption what is hashing why we need to use why we need to encrypt the data why we need to hashing that data what hashing does what encryption does what are the protocols we have clear guys i'm not yet enter into the ipsec vpn so just how the in uh in i mean say, uh, <coughs> secure communication is happened by using vpn so these protocol behind that vpn these mechanisms are working guys so that's the reason i just want to show you first 
clear whether it might be SSL VPN or whether it might be IPsec VPN. Any of these protocol for hash for encryption, either symmetric or asymmetric, it will it will use it. So under symmetric dash da, three dash AES, under asymmetric RSA DSA, these are all the digital certificates you have to create or you have to purchase this certificate from the in uh, certificate authority. Okay. <clears throat> So this algorithms we are using it okay, for encryption purpose and hashing purpose. We are using these are the MD5, SHA, SHA-1, 2, SHA-256, 512, 384, like that. We are using it. Okay, clear guys. What is en encryption? What is hashing? Why we are using that into in the VPN? Guys, I'm not yet started VPN, how IPsec VPN is working. Inside the IPsec VPN or SSL VPN, what are the security mechanisms we are using? That I just, <clears throat> I just want to share with you guys. So I, that's the reason I'm saying this, what is uh, encryption, hashing and all. Can okay, tomorrow we will see what is IPsec VPN, what are the type of uh, protocols we are using, and what are the processes happen in IPsec VPN? How many IP packets will, I mean, how, what are the packets will exchange for IPsec VPN? Okay, so that and all, I'll start tomorrow. And if possible, we'll do lab tomorrow itself for IPsec VPN. Okay, so uh, for this lab, IPsec VPN theory explanation I need, almost I have done, but along with that, if I started with along with the IPsec example, then you can able to understand. Okay, so uh, what are the processes happen in IPsec phase one and phase two that I explained, then it is fine. You can able to easily understand. Okay, so we'll do it tomorrow. I, I need more than one hour for that. So we'll do it tomorrow. Is VPN client is same thing VPN? Yes. Client VPN, SSL VPN, web VPN all are using remote VPN or same client VPN the same process you are going to use one application for that for web VPN you can use your browser to establish the SSL VPN for client VPN you are need a, you need to install one application that's it additionally you need to install application if you are installing the application as a medium to establish the SSL VPN that is called a client VPN. If you are using your browser to establish the SSL VPN browser authentication, if you are doing web, web portal authentication, then that is called web, web based VPN. Yeah, that is also SSL VPN only. For authentication purpose, either you are going to use your browser or application. If you are using an application, that is called a client VPN. If you are using a browser, that is called a web VPN. Clear, Vijay? Okay, guys, that's it today. We'll meet tomorrow. Bye bye. Take care.